All right, so we've been getting this question a lot lately. Why are we here? Why are we talking about Blackfin right now? We've been hearing a lot of concerns um, in recent years, primarily from uh, the Keys in Southeast Florida. Uh, um, I'm gonna tell you more about those concerns in a few minutes. Um, but there have been a lot of requests for species-specific management of this fishery. And this is a pretty data-poor fishery. We don't know nearly as much about its biology and movement and things like that as we do about a lot of species that we're able to do stock assessments for. So there like, will, will not be a stock assessment in the near future. So the reason we're here tonight is to gather input from anglers um, about how the fishery operates in this area. Um, I, we know that in some parts of the state it's a bait fishery, some parts of the state it's a food fishery. You know, how do you interact with the fishery? Um, also, how's the fishery doing here? Are you seeing a lot of fish? Are you happy with what you're seeing on the water? Have you seen any declines? Things like that. And then if you're interested in uh, potential management options moving forward, what you think those might be. So a little bit about blackfin tuna. They're actually the smallest of the true tunas, uh, significantly smaller than um, things like bluefin. They're pretty fast growing. Uh, they can reach about 16 inches in about a year or less. Um, and they're found between Massachusetts all the way up here, all the way down to Brazil, throughout the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. Um, but they are not highly migratory, like some of their relatives. They don't do any transatlantic migrations. They're really only in the Western Atlantic. And um, one genetic study has found that there's actually pretty, there's not much movement between blackfin on the Gulf Coast of Florida and blackfin on the Atlantic Coast of Florida. Um, so that's something interesting to know. We do know that they move seasonally and they have different behaviors at different times of year. Um, and some studies have suggested that might have to do with spawning behavior. And the peak spawn is from May to June throughout most of Florida. All right, so this fishery operates, I mentioned it operates uh, pretty differently in different parts of the state, but it's often targeted by uh, trolling, jigging, uh, chumming fish up to the boat. Um, we learned last night that in some parts of the state it's a good overnight fishery because they come up with the lights and the bait. Um, it's also really common bycatch when people are fishing for things like dolphin and sailfish. This is primarily a recreational fishery, and in the past uh, 25 years or so, um, so we've got this figure on the slide, the blue bars are recreational harvest, and the yellow-ish bars at the top are commercial harvest. And um, in this whole time series, it's ranged between about 92 to 95% recreational in most years. But over the last five years, um, oh, so, sorry, um, looking just at recreational harvest over the last five years, about 60% of that is coming from um, private boat owners, and about 40% is coming from the for hire industry. And related to where the fishery operates, um, in the last five years, it's been slightly on the federal water side, about 60%. Uh, with 40% coming from state waters, but the preliminary data for 2018 looks like that might be shifting a little bit towards state waters. Um, the preliminary data shows that about 60% in 2018 came from state waters. So the current management of this fishery is pretty easy. We do not have species specific regulations with FWC. There is a default recreational bag limit in Florida statutes that applies, and that is 100 pounds or two fish per person per day, whichever is greater. Um, so if you're catching 10 pound fish, you can catch 10 of them. Um, for federal waters, it's not managed by either the Gulf or the South Atlantic Council, and it is also not a highly migratory species, and so it's not managed by uh, the NOAA Highly Migratory Species Division, like most other tunas are. All right, so I mentioned that we've heard some concerns uh, predominantly from Southeast Florida and the Keys. So some of those concerns are related to increased harvest. Some people have reported that there's more interest in this fishery in recent years. Um, and in some parts of the state, you can predictably find them in a location at a specific time. Um, we've also heard concerns that there are a lot of small fish being taken, um, potentially fish that haven't spawned. We've and we've also heard reports that there have been localized declines in certain parts of the state. So people who are concerned about a fishery often um, suggest management options to address those concerns. So we've heard um, a variety of things. Um, for size limits, we've heard 
everything from a 15 inch minimum size limit to, you know, whatever, whatever six pound fish is. A six pound fish, you shouldn't be taking anything smaller. Um, for bag limits, we've heard, you know, maybe two fish, maybe 10 fish. So we've heard quite a range. We've heard a pretty big range for vessel limits as well. Um, we've heard, I think, anything from about 10 to about 60 fish might be appropriate. Um, and so those are just some of the suggestions that we've heard from stakeholders. Um, and we've also heard some requests, requests to extend any state rules that we might make into federal waters off of Florida. All right, so let's talk about size limits a little bit more. Um, there are definitely things that managers look at when we're looking to set a size limit. And they're often <coughs> set so that half of the fish in a population have had the chance to spawn at least once prior to being harvestable. And so um, for females, for female blackfin tuna, 50% um, of females are mature at about 14 inches. And for males, that is about 16 inches. Um, but we know that that's not always the most important thing. Uh, there might be other factors that influence what size limit we might uh, set. It might be desirable harvest size. Oftentimes food fishermen and sport fishermen desire different size of fish. We know that um, blackfin is used for bait in some areas and they might desire a smaller fish than um, other fishermen. Um, and we certainly want to be cognizant that different parts of the states, the state have different sizes available to them. So maybe some parts of the state predominantly get those smaller fish or predominantly get those larger fish. And those are things we certainly want to take into consideration. And then if we were to consider um, a recreational size limit, we might also want to look at applying that to the commercial fishery. So just some other things to keep in mind. In the last five years, um, based on MRIP data, of people who said that they were going out and they were targeting blackfin, most trips came back with about two to three blackfin. Now that doesn't mean that some people didn't wash out that day and some people didn't catch 10 or 20, but on average, most people caught two to three blackfin on their directed trips. We also know that there are regional differences in the timing of this fishery, and if we make any type of seasonal regulations, that might disproportionately affect certain parts of the state. Similar to that, we know that peak spawn is May to June. Um, that corresponds, people often request for spawning season closures for a lot of fish. We know that that corresponds with some of the best months to target blackfin in a lot of the state. And we also know that those are really good months for fish for fisheries where blackfin is often caught um, incidentally. And also um, just a reminder that the commercial fishery is a pretty small portion of this fishery. So let's talk about federal waters a little bit. I mentioned that there are no regulations in federal waters right now because the councils and HMS do not manage them. But a significant portion of the landings do come from federal waters. So we have heard requests to, if we make regulations, extend them out uh, to 200 miles. And that is allowable for us under the Federal Fisheries Management Act, the Magnuson-Stevens Act. Um, if federal managing partners are not managing a species, we are able to do that. And we do that for a variety of species already. Um, in this part of the state, um, we extended regulations for barracuda a few years ago. So it's something that we do for some species already. 